Hi guys, hopefully this should be the first time I attempt to try and get some footage um, of me uh, using my airbrush, so if it's not perfect, uh, please forgive me. Um, but uh, before we start spraying, I'm going to go over a few quick things. Uh, now, I've generally now I don't um, spray with the cap on because um, um, the paint can clog up in there and you clean it out. It's fairly easy to clean out, but I've just prefer I've just uh, come to the stage now where I actually prefer spraying with the cap off. Um, you have to be careful because um, the needle obviously is protruding out and if you drop it down on the needle, well, obviously you're going to need to get a new uh, needle. So that's what the cap um, uh, is there for really, just to prevent uh, damage to the actual needle. But uh, as I say, I've, I've got to a stage where I actually prefer working without it. So I mean, it is preference. Um, if you think you, you, you know, you're going to uh, drop it um, a fair bit, then definitely keep it on, but uh, it is preference. Uh, going over how I put uh, the paint and how I thin it. Now I'm going to be using I'm going to be um, using uh, Vallejo uh, Gain Color Earth, and I'm just going to be dusting some dirt on the bottom of the feet of um, some Space Marines that I've been painting. And uh, this paint is way too thick to be applied out of the airbrush. Um, the airbrush will get clogged, and you know you'll have all sorts of problems. Uh, so I'm going to be thinning it. I'm going to be using Vallejo's thinner, which I've already put in a handy dropper bottle, but I've um, this is like a, my own mix of, um, this is, I'd say one part uh, Vallejo um, airbrush cleaner um, and one part just um, uh, distilled water. You can use tap water, but if you can get hold of distilled water, all the better really. Uh, make sure it doesn't contain no uh, additives that can um, bite you in the ass later on down the line. But as I say, um, use what you can use and and then about eight parts uh, thinner so a tiny bit of um, airbrush cleaner in there a bit of water then most of it's thinner um, but you can use the airbrush um, thinner straight straight from the bottle it's just that uh, I don't know I've, I've, I've started mucking about with my mixes and I find this works quite well right uh, a crucial thing if you do get an airbrush and, and you're new to it what, what I started to do when I first got my airbrush is I'd uh, put my thinner in, straight into the cup, I'd put my paint in and then what would happen is the paint's obviously heavier and thicker in consistency than the thinner. So that would do, seep straight um, to the bottom, straight through the, uh, the thinner and when you're trying to swirl it round in the cup, it wouldn't really matter because the thicker paint would still be towards the tip of the airbrush and when you went to shoot it, you're shooting thick paint out and it would clog. Um, so what I'm about to show you is what I do. It's not ideal. I definitely wouldn't recommend people to um, mix it in the cup unless A, you're very, very good at uh, using your airbrush and, 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 and B, you've got no other options. Um, ideally, you'd have tiny little cups that you can mix um, your ratios of paint to thinner and then you t t tip it back into the cup. But uh, as I say, I'm, I'm a bit short on those. So I'm gonna show you how I go about it. So what I do is I make sure that the airbrush is tilted to the side and I squirt the paint in that I believe I'm going to be using and then I put the thinner in. Now I go about 10 to 1 roughly, I mean it could be less, but you can see there's a lot of thinner going in there. Um, let's get that in. Sorry, I'm actually going against myself to make sure it's going on camera because I can't, the camera's above my head so I don't know what it's filming so hopefully it's picking this up and then I use a cocktail stick to mix it all together and I make sure it's all the pigments thoroughly mixed in there and as you can see that's like a consistency of water or milk rather um, and you can see as it's running down the side that's very thin and, and you need that consistency otherwise you'll run into problems um, seems fairly mixed so we're going to leave that there um, now I'm going to start hitting some um, paint on, on the surface, see how it's spraying out. Now it's very crucial that you don't just put your paint in and chuck it on your model, your tank, whatever you're painting. Because if you do, um, there's a few things that can happen. One, um, your brush might be a tiny little bit clogged and you could be hitting it with paint and nothing's coming out. And you keep doing it and you keep doing it and all of a sudden what was clogged a second ago is not. And then a big burst of paint is going to shoot out and splatter all over your model. So you don't want that to happen. Um, you could have possibly have thinned the paint too much. And when, when you start laying it down, it can start coming out like water. Um, 
and uh, just to get uh, get yourself into the feel of the airbrush as well like um, to get range that's too close that's fine and, and you once you know where your sort of range is then you can start hitting it on your model it only takes a couple of seconds but it's insurance to make sure that when the paint is um, going to hit the model it's going to hit it the way you want now I'm, I'm running it um, what should we run it at 20 psi sorry I can't get that in camera because obviously the airbrush is off to the side and it means moving things around but there's a dial and I just turn it down basically um, so we're going at about 20 psi yeah 20 psi I'm just going to pick up a model and uh, if I spray the model directly like this the, the cone of spray is going to hit it all over so I'm having to angle it down obviously I'm going to get over spray on the base but it's it's only just been base coated so it's not a problem I can easily touch that back up in seconds with some paint if need be um, I wasn't actually going to um, weather these but I thought you know I needed to get something on camera for you guys to show you how simple and easy it can be to do things um, these miniatures have all um, literally been um, airbrushed all the paint's been airbrushed onto them um, and it was very very simple I've got um, colour blending and, and um, nice transitions in colour with the airbrush that would have took me hours with the paintbrush when it was very simple with the airbrush anyway I'm going to stop rambling on now and I'm going to try and start hitting this miniature with some um, dust and dirt so let's see how it goes on shall we so I'm actually angling the airbrush down onto the miniature picking that up and sorry for the noise that's obviously the compressors just kicked in there but uh, as you can see um, it starts to go effect and you can let it dry and then just hit it again a little bit more I don't know whether uh, the camera's picking up from that side of things, so let's try and show it from the front. There we go, and it's just a, a very quick, uh, dusty technique. Now, obviously, you can spend more time and that will work from darks to lights, but uh, with your infantry based troops, it's, it's not that crucial, but you can still see that uh, it's a subtle blending and it's done in seconds. We'll do one more on camera and see how it goes. You might be able to see it a bit easier on this one because he's got um, decals on his legs, so you might see the brain going smoother on camera. So let's try and get that in there. And again, I'm working from the wrong side of myself here just to make sure that it picks up on camera. So And if, if you ever get paint that runs a little bit, just uh, hit it with some air uh, and it'll do what you want it to do. Uh, it'll get rid of that uh, run of paint.
right, there we go. Now I've made that way awkwarder than, than I normally would. I'd um, obviously be, I'd be spraying like this and I can see exactly where it's going, but I've been trying to do it but on the reverse side of myself. But even so, um, still fairly accurate and you've got a nice dusty effect and, and you can do that literally in seconds if you're not uh, uh, hindered by a, a camera and um, chatting on camera. It's, uh, it's that simple. Um, how I actually painted the blue, let's uh, get a mini into um, shots, get rid of this, sorry, one second. Um, if you can see on camera, uh, I started off with a really dark base, um, it was like a, a navy blue with a tiny bit of black mixed in, and then I uh, started hitting that up with um, dark, um, what blue was it now, um, let's try and have a look, it's one of my model airs I believe. Sorry for this, wasting time on camera, um, might edit this out. There's one of the blues anyway. Um, that was one of the blues that I used for the uh, hot to bring up the highlight colours, um, and I just kept I did it in there. And um, using um, what I've uh, learned off the internet from uh, Les from Awesome Paint Job, he's angling it down, and because the cone of of um, paints coming down, it's just going to hit a highlight on the bottom of things, and it'd be the same on on the um, pauldron there. You hit it from an angle, and the paint's going to hit the top which is going to give you a natural light source so hopefully the camera's picking it up that um, the, the colour transitions and the more you use it obviously the easier it becomes and let's try and have a look at this guy here um, again it's the same sort of thing um, I'll be honest um, using the airbrush and uh, painting them in that style has um, saved hours literally um, to base coat them to put the colour down to blend the colour um, would have took me you know forget all the um, uh, guns and faces and things like that just to do the armour would have took me between an hour and an hour and a half per per minute before easy uh, now I can do that in about 10-15 minutes per minute maybe even less than that and, and I'm still uh, messing up with the airbrush and, and um, I've, I've not got fully to grips with it but uh, even at this stage you can see that uh, it's very easy to use um, right I think it's, that's it for this one guys um, hopefully um, this has helped you uh, demystify um, an airbrush a little bit but as I say I, there's so much I, I, I could go over and hopefully in future videos I'll be able to show you more but just for now as you see it's very simple to create effects with the airbrush um, that, that with a with a paintbrush you, you'd struggle with. I mean, you could have glazed that technique.